really to get back on on, uh, on topic, um, you were discussing uh, a few things that made me know inside that uh, when I'm hearing something or when I'm really not hearing but feeling something, then it's depositing to me. Um, my body telling me, hey, you shouldn't eat that. I feel this certain way when I eat, um, you know, or, uh, or if you consume anything that's not good for you, uh, you can feel it. Or if you're around somebody that don't give good energy, uh, something's telling you to move away from that. Uh, to me, that's God. So uh, listening, listening to that just makes me think about that. Now, of course, the alternative uh, uh, masculine principle, uh, right now I'm in stuck on that because as I'm studying uh, uh, the difference between public and private, you can't help think about the other half of who we are, meaning the women. Okay, and as I, as I study these things, it all comes back to being in the union. Uh, in order to uh, to grow a family, it, it takes both. Um, and nowadays, it's really hard to uh, to, to talk with the sisters um, about this particular topic. Uh, the first thing uh, that comes about is a, is a religious thing. Um, and then, as as I think about that, I start to think about the children. You know, how do you educate the children to think differently than what we've been programmed to think? Um, and so, can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. I'm trying to see, you yep. know, how, how you, what, what exactly is your question, I guess? You know, I know you kind of well, I really don't have a question. No, I'm just pr pretty much uh, uh, commenting on the different um, uh, different layers of, of this life that we live in. And it, it's, like I was saying, it's strictly about if you're studying something. Like I said, I'm studying the public difference between public and private. I can study that, but to me, you have to have a foundation. And if you have uh, women that are not thinking on the level of uh, building the foundation to the point to where we're not just going off something that's public, uh, something that's really have no place and we have no control of. Um, so. My thing is, is, is what do you suggest that we can do about building something and, and or having a better foundation for it as far as the teaching of, of things? How well, first and foremost, yeah, I, I get, I get, I feel exactly what you are telling me because I hear this from our brothers who are sincere men, true men, real men who want to be good to a good woman. And I know that there are women out there looking for good men who want to, they want to lead a family. They're not women who all will take over and so forth. I know, I see this. Whatever it is that they're promoting out there is BS. It's, it's just for those who are susceptible to the nonsense, who are uneducated and don't know. The first thing that we have to return into the environment between us and our women is trust. Trust. Trust that they know that they can actually release and not have to worry about the job that we are doing, which they need for us to do in order for them to be who they need to be for us. The last thing or the number one thing that feminism removed from men was the trust of our, from men was the trust that our women had. They demonized us and put the 0.01% of men who are violent, and I'm telling you this, 99, 44, 100% of men are not violent and want to hurt and want to destroy and kill off women and beat them into submission. That's nonsense. These are the 1% of the society was elevated in the media to be the 100% or the 99%. And that demonized the other 99% who had no, uh, no way wanted to be those or to even be seen as those or would even think of being one of those types of men. And what has happened now is the amount of distrust that feminism wanted to place in our women, and, and this was a tactical uh, move, by the way, psycho, the psychological warfare. It's in my book, The Wounded Womb, how it was done. I can, you know, I can't, it takes a little while for me to start explaining it uh, here. It would take too much time. So I would actually just kind of capsule what I'm about to say. Um, our sisters 
uh, essentially were programmed to distrust us and to distrust our word because the environment as well as the resources necessary for us to be integrous with our word was removed from us. The, the middle management as well as the uh, middle class uh, manufacturing jobs that gave us the ability to uh, uh, start homes and families, because women don't start families, men do. Men are the creators and starters of families. Don't let this nonsense being told to us by this feminized media make you believe that women start families. They don't. Men start families. Men are the ones that structure the environment and have the resources to make sure that the woman is comfortable, she's safe, and she has the ability to raise the future inside an environment that is no longer dangerous. We clear the way for civilization to be. And when you take that away from us, then we become we, we, we move from becoming providers and protectors to predators. And that's exactly what the society who knows what it is and what it takes to be a healthy society, they took that ability from us. When they moved all the manufacturing jobs, back in the days when we did have families, back in the days when we had mothers and fathers in the home, raising families and taking care of our own children, back in those days, we had manufacturing jobs. We had the ability to tell the employers how much we wanted to be paid. We adjusted the so-called cost of living based upon our expertise. But then they knew that if they shipped the middle management jobs as well as what the jobs, the manufacturing jobs that the United States had overseas, that they would definitely maximize the bottom line of their profits and undermine and destroy the strength and communal strength that we had as families. Because families create the strong communities. You understand? whole family, men leading, the men protecting and making sure that community stayed there, and the women educating, teaching, nurturing, and giving the love that the children needed. We were undermined and destroyed as men. They attacked us first by first engendering a sense of monumental distrust. And they hired lesbian authors, feminists, and CIA agents, understand this, Remember, the leader of the feminist movement, or the perceived leaders, uh, leaders of the feminist movement, were hired and created by the CIA with funding from Rockefeller. And that's how the feminist movement back in the 60s were actually given the, the, the foundation, the media expansion, and the educational expertise. They brought it into the schools to, with this woman's education program, which essentially was nothing but lesbian education. So with that, the distrust grew because from generation to generation, our children, our young girls were told, don't trust the male, become independent, which is completely against her nature. She is a communal creature. She is not independent. And so now you have this Frankensteinian form of feminine thinking, whereas she is now, based on her monster, the, the actual monster maker, feminism, she is now got the electrodes in the neck, in the psycho-spiritual neck of our women. And because the society now has given her the resources to be that independent woman and taken away the resources for us as men to be independent, family-structuring men, now it becomes this mass craziness you see out here with our young boys over there twerking and our young boys talking about eating and sucking on dicks and all this kind of crap. That's what happens when the masculine authority in a society dies. And until women see that, and see that the moral and ethical structures of society are up by the men, because we know what is necessary to protect our sisters. This is when you see all of this kind of whorish behavior and madness out here, because we don't have control of our communities anymore. The police do, and you know damn well that they're not going to do a damn thing to change what's happening to our men, the faggotizing and the homosexualizing of our young boys. That's part of the structuring of genocide. It's necessary to make sure that the young black male is no longer the potent weapon against white supremacy. So how do you do that? Well, you change him into a woman. Therefore, you do not have that threat anymore because he's too busy trying to decorate himself like a woman, acting like a woman, playing at being a woman, playing at being his mother, and emulating his mother, who is the primary influence in his home. So when I say to you, beloved brother, 
Yes. So don't don't you think our people are making excuses though? Don't you think we're making it not? No, I think the men are making excuses. The men are making yes. excuses. Yes, okay. The men are yeah, making excuses because we're too busy damn talking instead of organizing and becoming the army we need to oversee. You see, remember, democracy don't work by you asking for anything. you got to demand it, and you've got to make noise, and you've got to be something of a threat to the system that's in place. The women don't change societies. Men do. Right. Women adapt. Them and adopt. Right. So they don't change. You don't look for Oprah to give you no billion dollars to change society. She's too busy decorating up that ass. <laughs> and trying you to get our sisters to follow her. So we don't you know, want we don't want our sisters leading us. And until men start saying and choosing women who are ready to uh, be led by a good man. I mean I'm not talking about no scruffy ass dumb ass man i'm not talking about that and our women ain't got but so many people to, uh, that are real men to choose from out there i'm right. talking about sisters if you find yourself a man that you're willing to make mistakes with as he's trying to adjust and help to become the man that he is so he could be the man for you then you need to stick with that man instead of dealing with this throwaway society like you do your shoes and i'm gonna get me a new pair of shoes because my, my my feeling and my attitude has changed no we need stick to it you find a good man, you stick with him, you work with him because he already got two strikes against him when he walks up to that plate with that bat. Okay? So until you find yourself a good woman who's willing to work with you as, a, as your wife, not no partner, you don't need no roommate. You don't need no equal person in your house. You need a wife, you need to be married, we need to be promoting marriage. And take these women out of this, uh, these clubs where they're over there whoring and scoring and hoping that the right one will come along one day. That, no, that, that, that's all the, the after effects of feminism that has destroyed our society and was set there to destroy our society. Gotcha. You know, a um, uh, well, question of, uh, of really, you know, advice, and, and it's something because I just graduated my son, my little cousin, and my nephew, which are all 18. Uh, I've, I've had them myself uh, for several years, and uh, it, it, it comes to the point now where they're about to enter college, and, and, and you know, my thought process is like, wow, like, you know, is, is this the right way for them to go, uh, you know, uh, and it's pretty much a decision that at some point we should be molding them, I feel like I should be molding them to something. I well, you have to debrief the them, about, uh, brother. Brother, you have to debrief them. That's what the father and I, I the good parent do that. does. That's it. That's I it. But then you're all right then. Then they're all right because the debriefing from the time they're in school and you send them to the school, and Malcolm always said this, it is the height of insanity to send your children to be taught by the enemy. If you are not debriefing your child every day that child comes home from school, I don't give a damn if they, you know, whatever it is, oh, I want to see my car. No, you're going to sit down. We're going to turn off everything, the radio, the television, everything. We're shutting everything down, and I'm sitting down at your level as a child. You tell me what you learned. And everything that they learn, you contradict it, and you make sure that that child becomes an antiviral mechanism against the teacher that he or she aggravates the hell out of the teacher for teaching the bullshit that they've been giving to our children. That's when you know that you will have your child after that child comes out of that education system that they have. Well, I see and feel that and experience that, you know, with them now. And uh, a lot of times I, I, I really look and, and, you know, and I talk to them, and it seems like they're in a bored state. Now, keep in mind, they're active in a whole lot of things, but uh, when it comes to the schooling, it seemed like that this stuff in this poor state, um, and uh, they're almost looking for something different other than what they're seeing. As I said, it's and a dead education system, a dead education system. It kills, it kills critical thinking. It kills the incentive of the individual to grow. It just wants to turn our children into consumer automatons. So yes, there is go they're going to be done because the genius of our young children coming back. I mean, you've got to remember, these are the ancestors coming back. They know exactly what time it is. You can't fool these children. That's why I don't speak to these young yeah, children right the way that. I normally speak to children. No, 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 no. I know who they are. And if I do not make my child and my student greater than me, 
and what the hell am I coming back to if I do reincarnate? 